Okay, if you want to do a pop quiz, uh, go ahead and pause this, get these copied down, and see if you could name the first three, and then write formulas for four through six. So I'll give you a second to pause and write it down. Okay. So I'm going to start with number one. I'm going to erase these so I can have some room. Okay. So when I see something like this, I say, okay, iron, there's three atoms of iron, two atoms of that. Okay, so these guys aren't alike, right? So it must have come from ions with different charges. And we know that if you do the cross rule, right? Well, if you do that, that in reverse, then this must be the charge on that guy, and this must be the charge on that guy. So that means it must have been like this before we put them together. And also, you could think of it as nitrogen is one of those, those predictable ones. It's pretty much always going to be um, 3 minus. So you could, you could bank on that too. And then if you just double check your work here and say, okay, these are, you know, just work it in, uh, in reverse and say, okay, if uh, this is 2 plus and that's 3 minus, those are different, I would swap those and I would end up with that. Okay, I'm on the right track. So now the question is, how do we name this? And remember that iron is one of those funny ones. It could be, you know, 2 plus or 3 plus. So we have to specify in the name. So we start off with the cation name, which is iron. And we have to specify which ion it is. So we put the parentheses. And since it has a charge of 2 plus, I want to put the Roman numeral 2. And now we have an N3 minus. Well, normally that without the minus in its elemental form, that's nitrogen. And so we're going to drop the last syllable and add I'd. So we get iron 3 nitride. So that's the answer to number one, iron three nitride. Okay, we can do the same thing with aluminum, with this one, Al2O3. Now both of these happen to be predictable. You could say, well, since aluminum is in column 3A, it almost always has a charge of 3 plus. And oxygen was another one of those predictable ones. It, it almost always has a charge of 2 minus. So it should be Al3 plus O2 minus. And we could also do it where we split them up and we go in reverse and say, okay, these are, uh, these are not the same. So if we did the cross thing backwards, then this must have been Al, this would have come up, and it would be 3. The O would come up and be 2. And we know the cation always comes first. Cations are positive. 2 is negative. And yeah, that's what we thought it would be, because the aluminum's almost always 3 plus. The oxygen's almost always 2 minus. So how do we name this? Well, this is one of the easy ones because it's just the name, aluminum, and then that. So it's aluminum. And then this is, it was oxygen, but after it loses its, its uh, electrons and, or gains <laughs> electrons and becomes a, an anion, we make it oxide. So that's aluminum oxide. Okay, now, number three was C-U-S. So let's think of the different possibilities. Copper is one of those weird ones, remember? It could have different charges on the ions. So, you know, this if we try the split it up method and say, okay, let's just split it up. And that this is one and one, then we'd have Cu 
plus 1, and s plus 1. But we know that s doesn't like to do plus 1 because it's one of those predictable ions. It's in a column or it's in group 6a. Is that, yeah, 6a. And it's, in, it's in group 6a, and so it likes to be sulfur. Oops, that should have been a minus. Sorry, sorry, minus. Sulfur 2 minus. So knowing that, knowing that that's almost always sulfur 2 minus, then we're going to say it must have been 2 minus. And then what would make that cancel out and give you 1? Well, it has the, the only thing left is that that must have been copper 2 plus. So copper 2 plus and sulfur 2 minus would come together as CuS because they have the like charges. So we're on the right track. Now we name the cation, it's copper, and now we have to specify, because it's one of those funky ones, copper 2, Roman numeral 2, and then this was sulfur, after it gains two electrons it becomes sulfide. The answer is copper to sulfide. Okay, now, number four was copper three iodide. All right, now with this, we, can, we already know what the ions are, right? So we have copper, which is Cu, and it tells us right there that it's 3 plus. And now we have the iodide ion. Now that's one of those predictable ones, remember? It's one of the halogens. It always likes to gain one electron, making it minus. So if we do the cross thing, then we end up with Cu I. Three. That's the formula for copper three iodide. Okay, now number five was magnesium nitride. Okay, magnesium Mg, you could look on the periodic table and it's in group 2A. So it's almost always going to have two plus. Nitride came from nitrogen. It's another predictable one. So it must be N3 minus because it's in group 3A. Now, since these guys are not the same, I could do my cross thing. Okay. We get Mg3N2. That's magnesium nitride. All right, finally, we have number six was calcium fluoride. And again, both of these are predictable. Calcium was a group 2A, so it's two plus. Fluoride was in group 7A. It's one of the halogens. It always likes to have a one minus. So if we cross those guys, put that one down there, that one down there, we get calcium F2. And there you go, that's answer number six.